So we're about to head back. Like so we're halfway through now. It's an old shelter. Oh. Or old shed or something like that. It looks like an old shelter. They got like a little campfire and all. I see it had steel doors on it one time. The old hinges here. All rusted up. Oh geez, there's a lot of golf balls out here. For real. My advice to anybody associated with this university if you're watching. Have some of your students come out, I'd say probably monthly on the field trip and collect your golf balls off the trail. Not very good for nature to be ingesting all that plastic. Oh, here you go. See, there's a view. Let's see. Beckless Point, 250 feet. This is Beckless Point, Tommy. Right here. Uh, that way, yep. Yeah. That's another tree looking tree. And yes, this is Beckless Point. Jump! <laughs> 1900. See? Right here. Well, yeah, it's, it's really the way that it's used This is famous though because basically different graduating classes and students from the university. See 1886 right here. See? Like 130 years ago. This has been a very popular spot for students for a very, very long time. So graffiti in the rocks is not really a good thing. But this is not fresh graffiti, this is really historic graffiti, I guess at this point, if you want to call it that. And you would have a really nice view from here without so much tree coverage. Probably during winter, when a lot of the leaves come off of these trees, you go appreciate the view a lot more. Um, but it is still a nice ways down. Yeah, probably, mm, what, maybe 80 feet, 100 feet, something like that. Nice view from up here. Checking back in real quick. We are almost done with our hike today. Um, we're in a different section of the gorge. Just checking this overhang, make sure no snake surprises waiting for me. Let's go see what this is. Your adventure awaits. Obviously, water comes through here. Uh, hmm. All right, I'm gonna stop recording for a second so I can get my light out and see what's in there. Looks like it might be a white cave, but it's too dark to tell just yet. Hang on, let me get the light out. So what do we have here? And it's wet, and I would say it's not a cave. It's just a big overhang. You can tell it's carved by water. It dead ends right there. The water just seeps through the rocks, and then it flows down through here. Let's just cross over and check out and see what's up on that side. So we just explored that little area there. Really nothing in there. And it goes back about 20 feet deep or so. I'm going to venture across through here. I'm pretty sure it's more rock overhang, just like back there. And so far, that is in fact what we have. Uh, yeah. 
So this gets narrow and goes back further. It might form a little tube going back, but I don't think so. Even if it did, it's only about a foot high or so back there. So nothing that worth trying to explore any further. And I think that's it. Then just goes back up to the ridge line. So there we go. That's it for here. Thanks for exploring it with me. Time to head back over to Izzy. So I think we're done in this area. We're almost done with our hike. And uh, along the way here, we saw some pretty mushrooms. One was uh, purple in the shape of a heart. We stopped to look at that. No, we know it's like a red one. So we stopped to take a picture. Then we saw this other mushroom like this over here. Um, it's purple. And we we're paying attention to that mushroom right there and kind of playing in the leaves. And um, I'm standing to the right of that mushroom and just about probably two feet from where or last from where I was pointing at the mushroom and digging around the leaves. See something else here. See if you can spot the issue. The thing that can really end your day badly if you're not aware of your surroundings. And even if you are, they're experts at camouflage. And right here, this pretty little creature, this little, see you now, it's a little copperhead. And he is right there, ready to strike any second. Um, but he's kind of chilled out today because it's a little chilly, it's not a real hot day. If it were a hot summer day, he'd probably be a little bit more squirrely and active. So he's watching me and he's hearing my voice and he feels the vibrations and stuff like that. So he knows I'm here for sure. Based on his size, I'm too far away from the strike immediately. But uh, he could certainly make a run toward me or things like that. And I wouldn't want to be any closer than this. I'm zoomed in right now, by the way. So my hand's still far away from him. But I just want to show you what they look like and how well they blend in with the fall leaves. So if you're ever out hiking in Tennessee, you do have to be careful because there aren't many snakes here. I've been hiking for over two years in Tennessee. This is the first copperhead that I've seen and the first venomous snake that I've seen. Um, seen a couple of non-venomous snakes of different varieties. First venomous snake. They do have some rattlesnakes and stuff in Tennessee as well. Um, and they also blend in like this. They have similar colors and all like that. So anyway, um, just be very, very careful. Whenever you're out in nature, you never know what you might find. Most of the time you're gonna find things that are fun. But in the case of this guy, it's kind of cool to see him. Um, but you wouldn't wanna put your hand in his face he probably won't strike you because he knows he can't eat you. But if you got too close to him, he would do a defensive strike. And again, they are highly venomous. And your day would not go well if he were to decide to bite you. And like I said, they rest like that with their head up. So they're always ready to strike. And I was really close to him before I actually noticed him. Because my attention was right next door on this mushroom right there. So as I zoom out here, you can see how close he is relative to that mushroom. There's the mushroom right there. And so my foot was about right here, leaning over, pointing to that mushroom with Izzy and kind of digging some leaves off of it. And my leg was right about here, right close to his branch. And he was just on the other side of that. Had he been a little bit more mature, a little bit longer, um, I would have definitely been in striking range. And even that, I was still too close for comfort. Um, so anyway, I just want to show this and I just want to share this with you guys a little bit because Again, beautiful creature, fascinating creatures, and they play a very important part of our ecosystem. So we shouldn't kill them or anything like that, but we do need to be cautious and we do need to remember we're in their home. So if you see them, the best thing you can do is like I'm doing now, keep your distance, don't get too close. And I'm using a zoom in feature, so I'm not as close as it appears. And we're not gonna bother him. We're not gonna poke sticks at him. We're not gonna chase him off. We're not gonna try and kill him. We're just gonna let him rest and enjoy his home and we're going to get out of his way. Where is his head? His right there looking at you. Actually, he's looking at me because they see more sideways, but you're looking straight up into his face. So, all right, let's go. Let's leave this guy rest. Yeah. See when he's curled up like that? That's curled up so they can jump out and strike. Uh-huh. Yeah, so his eyes are looking right at me. When I stopped to talk to him, I saw his head kind of come my way a little bit. So like I said, if I got too close, he would definitely hit me because he's not trying to eat me. He knows that I'm too big for him to eat, but he doesn't want to be killed or messed with. So he's not going to know. See? Yeah, so he's just watching me, keep an eye on me, make sure I'm not going to hurt him. So he's probably a little nervous too, so I won't stick around too long, but 
I just figure it's good to show people, you know, what they look like. In case if they've never seen one. But main thing is how easily they can how easily they can blend in. Because again, once I zoom out and come back like this, if I pan away like this and come back and move quick through, you probably don't see him, right? But if I come back and I slow down because I've spotted him and now I know where he's at, and we come in to zoom, now you see him. But very quickly, camouflages and blends in, right? So be careful. But even on trail, you have to be careful because yeah, because that little snake there was right on the edge of the trail. All right. So we, we had two miles over there. Yeah, so four miles round trip, basically. All right. More What's the lesson learned for today? Well, hopefully it's always pay attention to where you're walking and especially if you're reaching down toward the ground or anything like that. Because as we showed you earlier, uh, there was a venomous snake not very far off the trail and very close to a mushroom that we're looking at. So again, just know your... Huh? Actually, it's just like right over there. Oh yeah, yeah not far behind us. So, um, but we're far enough away that he's not gonna. He, I can't know why I keep saying it. It's, we're far enough away though that it's not gonna sneak up on us. So, so we're good. Um, but this is our loop today. Uh, the perimeter trail is a 20 mile loop around the university. Uh, obviously, we didn't do that today, but you can make your own kind of subset loop by taking um, this trail that we're on right now. This is the. Um, we said it earlier. What's it called again? Big. No the. Shag 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 Hollow. Shag Hollow. Yeah, Shagarag. Thank you, baby. <laughs> All right. Shagarag Hollow. And that's going down into this little valley out here, hiking along the valley floor and coming back up it to the top. It was pretty much rugged. Yeah, so it's a little bit rugged, not too bad. It's labeled as uh, strenuous, but compared to some of the other strenuous trails we've done, this one's not that bad. Um, you got a little bit of a rock climb out of there, but again, very minimal. Um, but the way you can make a, a loop trail out of this is if you take the perimeter trail and go this way, like if you're going to go to Piney Point, don't fear out the Piney Point. Stay on this and then come back up around toward um, Beck, uh, Beck Beck, Beckwith Point. Point. I'll take you back up on top here and come back all around to about four miles, just a little bit under. Um, it's a nice fun little hike though, and uh, I definitely would check it out if you're ever in Tennessee. If you want to know more about it, please uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to share this and other hikes with you. Um, yeah. Just be careful what, or watch where you're going because. Uh, watch the road! Watch the road! <laughs> no, I mean for real, and there's a snake. I don't even notice until he saw it first. Um, it's poisonous. Yes. Uh, on the other part, it's, it's very much rugged, but oh no, we always made it anyway. So I suggest you know, come on, go hike with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, got I will recommend this trail, you. by the way. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching. Salamat po. Uh, <laughs> snake. Bye. <Come> on! <laughs> <laughs> we finished up our hike today. Um, <laughs> And we uh, wrapping up here at this lovely view. Four miles hike? Yeah, about four miles. Yeah, we yeah. kind of made our own little short loop. Yeah, so, yeah. yep, that's what we did today. Until next time. Salamat po! No problem. No problem.